From eye-catching colors and designs that stand out in the crowd to an unparalleled soft and cozy feel unlike any other. From warmth and security for life's adventures and milestones to crafting a lasting legacy shared between generations. We bring comfort, joy, and happiness to life's most magical moments with the softest, highest quality plush fabrics on the market and through the difference we make at home and in our communities. Shannon Fabrics, making the world a softer place for over 25 years. Teresa, <laughs> where are you? Wake up. We're so comfy. <laughs> that robe does look comfy. The robe is comfy. The pillow is comfy. Yeah. Yummy pillow. Hi, guys. It's So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here at So Trendy. Do you say the Minnesota part? Mm -hmm. So Trendy, Minnesota, um, up in near Minneapolis area. So we're in Egan, a suburb of Minneapolis. So we are excited to be here. We are still on the road, shockingly. And uh, today we're doing a fun project. We're doing the Lux Cuddle. Well, 
gorgeous cuddle robe. So we are here doing that today. You look like you were going to say something, Hawk. Nope, I'm okay. good. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning. So thank you for joining us. We're really excited to be here. Um, before we get started, I want to remember the Kinder Box Kit. Don't forget to share all about the video. Send it to your favorite friends, your sewing groups, all that good stuff. Share the video and you will be entered to win a beginner box kit. So at the end, we will give one away. So make sure you do that. And um, I think we're going to try to give away one on YouTube and on Facebook. So share away and you'll be entered to win. All right. So is that all I have to tell them for here? I right? think we're good. Okay. Sometimes it's a lot of stuff that the we have to talk about. Sometimes not so much. So like I said, we're up in Min Minnesota right now. The leaves are amazing. So as someone who has lived in Southern California for the past six years, I will say there are no seasons really. Like it's just like, it's just kind of like this. And so as we've been going around the country, it's been really fun to like experience the seasons in a different way. And as we've come into this area of the country, the leaves are changing and it is just as beautiful as all those pictures that I had seen before. So it's really lovely. So I'd like to introduce you to the store's owner. So this is Rachel Montez and she is the owner of So Trendy. And we were talking just a little bit yesterday. How long has So Trendy been around? Six years. Six years. Okay. And so how long have you had? So you started here in this location yeah. and then kind of like strangely you have a whole other store double down the, the side, <laughs> double the size. <laughs> so it's twice as big so she basically has like three units in this place that um all are lots and lots and lots of fabric so you've been doing this for a while and you kind of specialize in quilting cottons and but and a lot of minky cuddle, a lot of so cuddle. a lot of cuddle and a lot of um the quilting cotton so it's kind of cool because the other area so we're in one part of the shop and the other area is where most of the minkies are and she has a ton so what is it that you love about minky because i know like that's how i first met you as you right. came to market and you're I like look what i made the bags the pillows the blanket right the shawls the vest the robes <laughs> right <laughs> so this this is one thing that i know about you is that you'll basically make anything, anything out of me yeah mm -hmm. so if it's if it's cuddle like and there's a pattern she'll try it like the same thing like whatever it is let's try it out of cuddle let's see what happens which i love so you do a bunch of stuff on facebook you do facebook lives right. and stuff yeah we do a lot of facebook lives typically thursday friday saturday at seven o'clock but if you follow and like the page You'll get notifications of when we go live. We do a lot of pop-ups. So there's a lot of Facebook shows going on. Right. So you can follow them on Facebook. And that's just so trendy MN, right, is how we find it. So you can follow them. And that you can go to their website, which is also so trendy MN.com. She has a whole bunch of the cuddle fabrics on there. If you go to, I think it says like minky slash cuddle or something, you get on there. There's a whole bunch of them. She has some of them combined together for today's project. And a lot of samples will show you some combinations that are really good from the stock that she has right now. Yeah. Right? And on the website, we have a 10% off. You don't have to put in a coupon or anything. Just nice. go there and purchase an automatic 10% off. Nice. Great. And how long is that good just for today? And tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. So today is what day? October? Tuesday, Tuesday the... Fourth. So October 4th and 5th. <laughs> then that's when the sale is. So if you're watching this after that, sorry. Right. You're going to have to just, you know, sign up and watch, buy their stuff at full price. So there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's the perk of being here, right? Is you get some deals, which is awesome. So anything else you want people to know about your shop? We love fabric. We have a great time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you guys, they do a ton of lives. So follow them because it's really fun. And she does all sorts of great stuff and very, very interesting takes on using the cuddle fabric. So and we're really yeah. excited to have you here. Oh, today. thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm Thank really you. glad to be here. So thanks. Thank I appreciate it. All right. So let's get started on our robe. So this is a pattern that we have been working on for a while. So the pattern was developed by... Rose DeBoer, who is our pattern writer, and she originally wrote the pattern and then we tweaked it to be used with cuddle fabric. So that's been really fun and it's been that, sort of this evolution over the past few months to try to figure out exactly how we wanted to do it and then being able to get some feedback from people, try out different techniques. So I'm going to show you how we have it in the pattern today. There's a couple of little things that I'm going to show you that you could do otherwise. Um, but this is a really fun project. I also want to thank, before I get too, too far into it, the uh, folks who took the robe class at Creative Passions, I had to think for a second, yep. Creative Passions in Chesaning, Michigan, and Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, because both of those classes were very helpful in getting this pattern really sealed um, into place and like getting it, getting it right, okay? So 
here is the pattern and you can find it on our website. Okay, it's a cute little illustration till we get a nice, nice picture to put up there for you guys. But this is the robe. Okay, you will download the pattern. It's a long one because it's a big project. Okay, so lots of pages. And then you're going to download templates. All right, so we're going to talk about the templates before we get too far into it. So when you get your first one, so let's put these aside. This is how it's going to print out is here. Let me move that so you only see the one. Okay, so when you print it out, it looks like this. You need to enlarge it so that it's 200%. We've talked about it before that when you're enlarging, sometimes it's hard to figure out what the percentages are. And we do it a lot with the stuffed animals. We make them bigger. 200 is a lot bigger. Okay, that's the thing that confuses people sometimes is it is, yes, a large amount bigger. But the way that you can tell is that this is actually twice as tall up here. Okay, so this one, if this gets twice as big, does yeah, that make sense? Uh, yeah, on some printers, yes, 100% is actual size. That is correct. Yes, yes, but you need to, like, if you need it to be printed, sorry, it is warm in the robe. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I just thought I would wear it for as long as I could, and then I was taking it off because it's warm. Um, Halfway through the show, you're just going to crawl under the table and take another nap. I might, yeah. <laughs> I'll grab that pillow, hang out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first thing you're going to do. You can see mine. I have to print it out. I tile it. I put the little marks and I tape it together. Okay. So this is actually actually six sheets that gets printed out this way. Tape it together. You've got your pattern. All right. Keep this as your original. You can also take it to a copy shop and they can do it for you. For me, it's just as easy if I do it myself. Okay. Even my printer will do that. So today we're actually doing the pattern smaller. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. But when you get your pattern, you're going to get this that you have to enlarge and this one that you do not. All right. This always confuses people. So we have it written on here. You can highlight that if you want to. This one is 100%. This one you need to enlarge. Okay. Got it. So that's very clear. This is also a pattern piece. This is a template. All right. So what I would suggest that you do, which is what I did for the project today, is that I got template plastic and I traced it and made templates out of it. And then I wasn't going to think that this was a pattern piece I need to cut out. OK, because you're not going to cut these out and use them to cut out fabric. You're going to cut them out and use them as a template. Got what are we it. trying to do? Just, just kind of showing. What oh, I is. see. So that's something you can get at a quilt shop potentially. Yep. OK, yep. great. Yep, and it's just it's just plastic. It's easily cuttable and makes a really nice template. So here, I'll trace this one out. You guys can see how it works. So well, basically, um, what size is this robe? Good. Uh, what is what does it cover? Is it a one size fits all? All robe? the sizes. All the sizes. Okay, so let me explain that in just a second. So we're just going to trace around this. If it's not perfect, we don't really care. Okay, and I'll tell you this side doesn't matter at all. Okay. So this is, see if I can write upside down. Okay, so this is the part that's going to go on the center back. So I'm going to redo my arrows. And this goes at the top line. I'll explain it more when we get to this point. But these two lines aren't actually lining up with anything. These will line up with the edge of your fabric. Okay, so this is, and this is the line that you'll cut on. All right, so you want to have this template that you can use to draw out that later, but these are the lines that are actually important, okay? So then you just cut that out with your scissors, your rotary cutter, whatevs, okay? Did that make sense? It did, okay. yes. Um, what is the difference Ooh. between a template and a pattern? So a pattern is an actually a piece that you need to cut out, and a template is something you're going to use to create something else. So you're not actually going to cut it out and do anything with it. Yeah, it's not a pattern piece. A pattern piece is something you're going to cut out in fabric, a template you're going to use to, to do something with. Yeah. And in this case, we're going to trim the neckline. Okay. So just to reiterate, when you get the pattern piece, this one is you just print it out 100%, leave it as is. You'll cut these pieces out, but you'll use them as a template. This one, you'll need to enlarge it 200% and cut it out and use it as a pattern piece. Got it. Okay. There are no stupid questions. No stupid questions. And it, this is a definitely a more complicated pattern than we've 
usually do. Okay, but we wanted to create a row pattern because they're really hard to find good independent or um, well, just independent row patterns have been difficult to find for us to do classes and robe is something that people want to do a lot of times with the cuddle. So we created our own pattern so that now we don't have to rely on anybody else's pattern, which is great. Okay. So we talked about the sizing of the pattern. And one of the things that I really like about this pattern is it really is usable for any size. So I think it says on here, I don't have my reading glasses on me right now. So it says, oh, measurements at hip up to 62 inches. Okay. So that it will go 62 inches around your hips. I can wear it, Hawk can wear it, and our hips are very different sizes. <laughs> so these can, can totally confirm. can confirm. So this works totally fine for most sizes. So I would say probably up to maybe like a women's size 20 um, would be fine. And then the cool part is that we can just enlarge this really easily. Okay, so let me show you the next part. So you're gonna get the, the fabric and what you wanna get, oh, we didn't go through ingredients. We should do that. Let's do that now. Michael, will you throw that up there for me? And we'll talk about what we need for this. All right. Let's <laughs> see if we can get it to come up. <laughs> there we there go. We go. All right. So what we're going to need is that pattern. We need three yards of cuddle or Lux cuddle for the main. We're using, um, I use Lux cuddle for the one that I'll show you. Uh, and then you need a one and a half yards of cuddle for the trim. Okay, and this Lux Cuddle Cuddle, it's totally um, interchangeable, no matter what you want to do, but we want three yards for the body, one and a half yards for the trim. Then you're going to want a 9014 stretch needle, of course, because we're working with cuddle fabrics, which are a knit. You want polyester thread, a felt tip marker or a ballpoint pen, rotary cutter and mat, micro serrated scissors and or a craft knife. We'll probably use both of them today. Long flower head pins, a stiletto. My favorite is the one from by Annie. You want wonder tape, which is optional. I'll explain when it works best. And then you'll want a walking foot, of course. Okay. So you will want three yards of your main fabric and a yard and a half of your trim fabric. All right. So that's the important part. Now, let's see if we can show this, Hawk. All right. Because this is, oh, you know what I didn't get? A stiletto. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hold on. Rachel, would you do me a favor? Would you look in this red box over here and see if you can find a stiletto in it's the top? In the, it should be in the top drawer section the, of Big it. Red. Yep. And then maybe oh, and in the, the black box on the right. Well, she doesn't have it. I'll open one because we've got a new one. We have one. I just don't really want to open a new I have like four. Okay. If, if, <laughs> I just forgot to grab it. I just realized that. Found it. I mean, All right. really nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So that helps me point. There we go. So this is the way I really want to explain some of this of how the pattern is laid out. So you're going to get three yards and you're going to cut this into two 48 inch lengths. And then from that, we're going to cut out our robe pieces. So you're going to cut out a robe front and a robe back from one of those 48 inch pieces. And then from the other one, you're going to cut out the other robe front, your sleeves, the hood and the pockets. And then this is some scrap. All right. So I would suggest that when you do this, the first thing you want to do is cut your three yards into two pieces, two 48 inch hunks. The cool thing about this is that we actually have some wiggle room here in how I think we have another like six inches that you can add to these to make them larger. So if you wanted to add to make your pattern, um, say, two inches bigger on the front, you could add an inch to either one of these. And, and add two inches to the back, to the width. Okay, does that sort of make sense? It does. So we just make these wider. If we wanna make them bigger, that size doesn't fit. If you're a tiny little thing, you can definitely shrink this. You can shrink the length. So if you wanted to do it shorter, any of that is very morphable because we're starting with these rectangles. And if you wanted to add length, add length to it, what's your move? If you wanted to add length to it, you'd need to buy more fabric, okay. obviously, because yep. the, the, this is the, you know, basically the three yards. So you would need to buy three and a half yards and you could add nine inches to either length. Totally so if you're doable. A, a tall person. Be prepared yeah. to do math. Yeah, be prepared to do some math, <laughs> but know that it is totally morphable. And the only other thing that is any sort of a size is the belt, which is actually 80 inches long. So it's a, you know, a hefty size belt that will fit pretty much anybody. If you need to make it longer, do. If you want to make it shorter, do. Like that's a, It's all up to you. And I'm happy to have you morph it to make it work for you perfectly. Okay. So we've done these little handy um, patterns on here that show you how to cut out the fabric. 
take note on which way the nap is going. So the nap comes down. You're going to cut some of these out. So like this front band, you're going to cut it out lengthwise so it doesn't stretch. The belt, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be lengthwise so it doesn't have stretch. All right, that's really important. If you do the belt this direction, which would seem like the easy way of doing it, your belt is stretchy fabric, which is just kind of weird. Um, it doesn't, doesn't work quite as nicely. Okay. All right, so just pay attention to your naps. You'll draw all of this out. We're going to do that on a couple of them here because um, I didn't do my belt loops, which are going to be, here we go. So it'll tell you how many you do it, how many you need. You need one piece that's 13 and a half by two and a half. And if I look on here, I'm going to find it's lengthwise, right? Because the, this is the length by the width. So 13 inches that way, two and a half inches that way. All right. Okay. Got it. Um, another sort of general question. We're probably jumping ahead a little bit. Okay. Is the hood optional? The hood is optional, but we don't have, I mean, you could not do it, but we don't have a way to, to fix it right now. What I would suggest that you do is when we get to that part where we actually put that together, we'll kind of talk about it a little bit and how you would do that differently. That's okay. going to require more math. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so because it's cuddle, we want to draw our lines first. So I'm going to do my lines. It's I'm going to look again, two and a half inches wide. So, and 13 inches long. My ruler is 12 inches. So I know, I know I need to add another inch or so there. So here's my two and a half. And I'm going to draw a little line and do an inch past. Keep it lined up there. This is obviously my scrap from before because it's got more marks on it. Uh, we are not going to really care about the black marks, except on a couple places you might want to be careful, and you'll see where those are as we go. Um, if you want to be careful with it, you just cut on the inside of the line. Did okay. we Did we actually, did I miss this? Did we talk about the idea that we're doing this out of C3 and not Lux and why? Oh, no, not yet. Okay. We haven't gotten there yet. We're just talking about cutting still. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you'll notice that with, if I'm doing this with the C3, I'm just going to cut it with my rotary cutter. There's not a whole lot of mess. I'm just going to flick it over here and it's fine. Hey, Debbie, you can absolutely watch this again afterwards. It yes. will be available to rewatch. You can rewind it. You can play things again. You can go back and check. And please do because it'll, yeah, it. there's a you, lot coming. You can sew right along with her after you get your fabric. Okay, so I would suggest that one of the things, if you, if you look back at this paper, there is a whole lot of pieces here, and it's a lot of measurements. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is you're going to, I'm going to find, so my nap is going this direction. So I'm going to write on this side, belt loop. Okay, my nap is going this direction. That will help me know what is up. Can you see that okay? Barely. There, because it's there red. There it is. Sorry. Okay. So I will say that we had um one lady in um in one of the classes, and she did all of her labeling. I think it was when we were in um, Indiana. She did all the labeling with her Sharpie, but big, right in the middle of the pieces. And if you do that on the cuddle, the robe front and robe back, when you open up the robe, it just says robe back. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, okay, so if you're going to mark it, maybe mark it up at the top, like in the seam allowances. <laughs> Something more subtle. <laughs> so the belt loop, we're actually going to tuck it all inside. It'll be totally fine. You'll never see it. But um, it was pretty funny. that <laughs> It was very clear which piece was which so but I would suggest that you mark them so this is a friction um, felt tip marker and you can absolutely use that and then you can take a little iron to it and it'll just come right off or you can mark it with your sharpie and just mark it you know small up at the top of your piece but there's so many little pieces that are these kind of wonky little shapes that you're like what is that actually does it like the pocket pieces don't look like pockets they're just rectangles so if you write pocket and pocket band whatever on all of those pieces label them correctly it will make it much easier as you put it back together later okay hey everybody who was looking right. for the pattern i saw that somebody in the comments tara thank mm -hmm. you very much you just posted a link oh, there's great. a great way to get to it right on our blog um you know mm -hmm. yeah if you go a little bit of 
digging sometimes to find our, our stuff on her website. Sometimes it does. I will tell you the biggest trick for finding patterns on the site is to go, you go to shannonfabrics.com, scroll down to the bottom, find the free patterns, click on there. And on that page, there's actually a search box up in the upper left corner that you can just type in robe and it'll find the robe or pillow and it'll find all the pillows. So that would be my suggestion is to go search for a thing. If you're looking for a blanket, type blanket, it'll give you all the blankets, which is kind of nice because sometimes there's, you know, like, I don't know, we have six different blankets. That's an overwhelming different... search. No, it's not that, <laughs> There's a lot of blankets. It doesn't show you all the variations <laughs> that you could do. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is that pattern. Oh, and I wanted to cut the, um, I was going to cut a little bit of the belt out of this one so we can do it. So this is my width wise. This is my length wise. Yep. And I'm, so I'm going to draw this. And we're going to use this. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the belt out of this little piece. Uh, it is, if I can find my belt piece, it is four and a half by 40. So I'm going to do four and a half by 12. Just as sort of a sample. Yeah, because we're so, just going to do a little sample of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and, so I marked the one line. I'm going to slide this over to four and a half inches. Get that lined up with the line that I just drew. And draw this side. Okay, so this is just a sample piece, but this is the right width, all right? So now before I get started, I was cutting some fabric earlier and it didn't work very well, so I figured I'd show you how to replace the blade on my favorite tool. So this is the Olfa SAC-1 blade, which works really well for cutting cuddle fabrics. And it will get to a point that it doesn't cut very well because it gets dull. So one of the things I like about this is it's really easy to change the blade on it. So I'm gonna click this out so that the blade, the line here is completely past the end. Then I pulled this off of this end. Pull it off, bring it over here. I'm just going to snap it. I can get it to go right. There we go. Nice. And that little piece has this perfectly little engineered slot in it that grabs it and gives you, yeah, makes it less yep. dangerous. Yep, slides right on there. Okay. So I used to always use a hemostat and that's why I showed to do it the first uh, couple of times and then I then I think it was April one of our brand ambassadors showed me that little thing and I thought that is genius. They put that on there and if I'd read the instructions I probably would have realized that <laughs> long before. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now we're going to put this back in the back. We don't want to lose it. So now I'm just going to cut the fabric. So if you're using a lux cuddle you're going to draw it all out. And then you're going to cut it. And I cut everything with this blade if I can when it's a Lux Cuddle because it just cuts it so much neater. And the trick there is that you're only cutting the backing fabric. You're trying not to push through and cut the nap off. I'm not pushing super hard, but I'm also not, um, I'm not being super light about it. Okay. So it's just a kind of a weird way that it will actually um, cut really nicely. Something that people notice too is it will cut nicer on a lengthwise cut than on the widthwise. And, and I this, think it's part of because of the stretch and the nap. Oh, uh, makes sense. And this angle, super low angle, like mm -hmm. almost parallel to the table, right? right? Uh, you're, so, so you're almost just dragging the blade along. Exactly. And you can see here how it leaves the nap on the backing which is you know better than it being all okay. over here so it just creates a little bit less mess which is great okay so i'm going to move that there swipe that under and then i'm going to make sure so give this will get shake okay and then i'm going to go ahead and pet it and figure out which one is better so this is something we do in class a lot as people try to pet it and they do they do like <laughs> you gotta pet the whole thing. <laughs> like do a big pet. Figure out which way it goes. If I pet it this way, it stands up more. If I pet it this way, it lays down. So this would be my nap going this way. All right. So I'm gonna draw that on here with that. And this is my belt. Okay. So again, this is the not stretchy way, so that when I put it on, it doesn't like just stretch out further and pull back on me. Okay? So we'll deal with those later. All right. Any questions on the cutting? Is anybody here? Everybody's okay with that? Okay. Um, if you have any questions online, please just type them into the little box and we'll get them and over here. I'm working on it. And we'll them. answer so them. that with that cutting knife again was the Olfa SAC-1. Yes. 
Okay, so you can write on the back. The other thing you can do is little post-it notes and then pin them on. That works really well. Um, just keep track of which pieces are which because it will get a little bit um, confusing if you don't. You'll have to remeasure things and be like, which one is this? Um, that's what I did a bunch of. So let's talk about how I'm going to make this robe today. So this robe is a full-size person robe like it's an adult robe so it's a lot of fabric like I said it's you know you buy four and a half yards it's about four yards that you're wearing so one it's a little bit heavy also warm and um it's a lot to kind of show when we're here today so we decided I decided um that it, we would do it half size so I've done this before in a couple of classes and it works really well so what I've literally done is I have shrunk the pattern down instead of blowing up 200% like we did the hood pattern, I shrunk everything down by 50 to 50%. So everything is half of what it was before. All right. So that means I'm using the hood pattern exactly as it printed out of the machine. And I shrunk my templates to little bitty. Okay. So everything that I do today is going to be smaller, but you're going to do it bigger and it will make a real rope. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, so we've cut all, all of our fabrics. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the pocket, all right? The reason we start with this is so we can learn a couple of the skills and then we're gonna um, set them aside for later. So here's my post-it notes on what I'm doing. All right, here is my pocket. You have a pocket band and a pocket. And you're also, you also switched to C3. I did. Luck, I right? did. Right. Exactly. So I'm using the C3 today. It's the same. Here, I'll move the, this robe so you can show that robe there. So if you show this robe, so this is the robe that we're making, we're, we're but we're basically in small version. Okay. So this is the Lux Cuddle Blossom and Lux Cuddle Frost. So we're using the peach color and the white color to make a small version. Okay, just so it's and, a little bit easier for uh, you to see what's happening. Those are the pockets the that we're going to make. All right. So all right. hopefully it will all work out and make a lot of sense. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make the pockets. Um, so what I want to do is I have two pieces that are, one is the band and one is the pocket, and they're the same size. All right. So this is where, like, writing things down will be helpful. I want to make sure, I want to see which way my nap is going. My nap is going this way. Okay, and I want to, so I want to sew my pocket band onto the top of it. There's some fuzz. I don't know where fuzz would come from. Okay, so here's my band. Here's my pocket. I'm just going to flip this over. Now, if you've worked with this stuff before, you know if you put the naps going in opposite orders, they are not going to behave nicely. So I'm just going to flip it over and try to be as gentle as possible. And I'm going to pin the beginning and the end. And I'm going to pin a couple of places in between here, parallel to that raw edge. This wants to move. So I'm just going to do my best. And the seam isn't going to be perfect. And that's OK. All right, it's going to work out just fine. All right. So Is it possible, do you think, to? with reducing this pattern 50% for the demo today, um, mm -hmm. that that would make a good child size? It would make a tiny child size, like a toddler, maybe. Right. Maybe. Um, well, you'll, you'll see, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll show But you could, I mean, because children come in varying sizes. Fair. As Actually. a mom, I remember, my children came in varying <laughs> sizes over the years. <laughs> so like, child size would be, vary. That but could you be could, measured in, in money. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, but I think that you probably could, you definitely have to do some math as to how much of a percentage you needed to shrink it down. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to come over and sew. I am doing everything, like I said, at half size. So my seam allowance is going to be a quarter of an inch. Yours is going to be a half an inch. So it'll be a half an inch throughout all of it for you. All right. Okay, so I've got my um, I've got my Mettler thread in there. So I've got polyester thread. I have my stretch needle, and and I've got my straight stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my hand in there and pop my um, stitch length up to a three stitch length. So this should work fine, and especially with the C3, it'll work great. Um, if you're using a Lux cuddle, you could um, make it a little bit higher. Also, because I'm on the Bernina. I'm going to lower my uh, my presser foot pressure, and I'm going to bump that down to a 40. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, start in a little bit, back stitch. Is that something you have to do basically every time you turn the machine on with yes. the presser foot pressure? That's yes. not a setting that it holds. Not that I can figure out. Got it. If anybody knows, so if anybody Bernina knows better than we do. How to make that lock <laughs> in there, because the only thing I sew on here basically is cuddle. Okay. All right. So now I've got my seam sewn across. There we go. All right. So this is a little bit of a tricky part here. We're going to do this at the very beginning. I'm going to keep this in this position. So here is my band. I'm trying to create a band like this. My pocket will be like this. We're, this is going to be a patch pocket, so we're just going to sew it right onto the front. Well, these seam allowances here would look really weird if I just top stitch this down. So we're going to do this kind of tricky little thing where I'm going to turn this over. So this is right sides together now. And I'm going to get the edge of my fabric to go just past the seam. Okay, and I'm going to pin that in place. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to pin it in from the side because if I pin if I pin straight in like this, it's not going to I can't get it to move at all. And this is actually going to be pretty stable. So I'm just going to stick another little pin up here just to keep the fold where I want it to be. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to show you from this side is that I'm going to push this seam allowance up and I'm going to get it to go just past that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, and I'm going to secure the seam allowance upward. Okay, so in the end, that will be inside the pocket. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it to the machine, and I'm going to sew down the side, and I'm going to sew down the side, and I'm going to sew across the bottom. This part, we're only stay stitching. So if you have done any, like, pillows with us or blankets where you have a turning gap, we're going to do the same sort of thing here to give us a fold line which actually works really well. So we've had a few people want to know why they can't just sew down the side, around, and back up. You can, you can, I promise. It won't ruin anything. But what I have found is if I sew from the fold down, I wanna sew from the fold down on this side because if the fabric pushes, it can get shifted weird and that's when you'll notice that it's a little bit on wonky. Got okay. it. So you want them to push down the the, the, the seam to be created in the same direction on both left right. and right. So, side. so you could sew it from here down if you wanted right. to, or from here. I sew it from the fold, but you just want it to be consistent. That's what that is. Otherwise, so it might sort of twist a little. It'll kind of twist a little. Got so, it. It, you know, it's not life changing. And if you did it that way, nobody's going to care, really. But you might notice a little twist in your pocket band. Especially if you were using the C3, more so. More so in the C3. C3 as opposed to the Lux Cuddle. Yep. The Lux Cuddle hides everything yes so this i kind of got that twisted a little bit we don't really care i'm just gonna leave it it's gonna be inside the pocket so. and again remembering that you are using a half an inch seam allowance even on this stay stitch yes. line yes for you oh no it did that thing what did it do it did that thing where it does sometimes when i'm cutting thread uh oh maybe maybe uh what's her name has a has a cure for me What's her name? Linda. Linda? Yeah. Well, Linda's really big with Bernina. She knows Bernina. Oh. Uh, so what did so it do? So what was what was it, the thing that it's... It throws up a setting thing that tells me that the gears aren't working because it stopped cutting the thread. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I don't really know what it's doing, but all I have to do is get it out. And then it's fine and it works again. Okay. So, you know, somebody has a cure for me. That'd be amazing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tuck that back under again. So I want to make sure that my seam allowance is pushed toward the band. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to twist it. Oops. And I'm going to move this. Sorry. It's all the buttons. Okay. And now I'm just going to stitch across the bottom. I'll try it again. See what happens that time? Oh, see, it worked out great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, you know, hit or miss. Okay, so now I've got it, hopefully. It's mostly pushed up. That one is a little bit weird. But we're going to keep it up like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. Oh, that was fancy. Okay, I Wasn't understand. It, though? Okay. So now we have a little pocket. All right, so this is the first. Um, you're going to make two of these. But we're going to finish this up 
real quick and add some um, top stitching here. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to show you one way here, and then we're going to kind of go through a couple other variations on it. Okay. So what I can do is I can go ahead and put my pins in here. Because from this side, I can see what I'm doing. And I can go ahead and top stitch this. We're going to put it onto a serpentine because it looks prettier on the C3. But if you're using Lux Cuddle, you can totally use a zigzag. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over. It's in my favorite stitches. Nice as that. So there's my serpentine stitch. That's what I'm going to use to do this stitching. All right. So that's a four wide, I think it is, and two and a half long. And um, so that's where I'm going to start with the serpentine. All right, like I said, you could do a zigzag as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this across. And I'm just trying to get the edge even with where the seam allowance is. I'll tuck that under. So it might not be pretty at the end, and we don't really care because it's going to hide. Okay, but now we have some top stitching on there. Okay. Okay, so you want to show the top stitching on the other one? Sure. What that looks like over here. And that's with the with the fluffed up stuff. You can't see anything. Oh, there's some somewhere in there. <laughs> this is some top stitching. Okay. So lost, that's why <laughs> that's why you do a zigzag. Soft. So the zigzag will be super easy to hide in there. Okay. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that was an exercise in futility. <laughs> yeah. So when I say just do a zigzag, it's faster and it just hides in there. It's super easy. You could do a serpentine, but you really won't see it if you fluff up your stitches at all. So that is just, yeah, it's, I feel like it's kind of a waste of time. Just do the fastest thing. So you said you might just need to clean your thread cutter. Oh, you okay. Thank you. I'll give that a try. I appreciate it. Okay. So now you're going to have, here's your pocket. These are going to be your turning lines. So when we sew this on, it's just going to kind of pop right under there. I can just give it a pull and it pulls right under a half an inch. Okay. So at this point, you're going to make both your pockets. I'm going to clip my corners just a little to keep that bulk down, I think. And then I'll put this aside. Right. So we're done until later. That was a little skill builder. Kind of get you That's warmed a little, up. Exactly. It's going to work right. through. We're going to work through a lot of those same sort of things. Okay. So next, I think, to look at my paper. <laughs> okay, then we're going to add the bands to the sleeve. Okay. <laughs> so thanks for thanks for coming along with me. Now this one, so you're going to have to think through these because on the pocket we wanted the band on the top, on the sleeve we want the band at the end. All right? So it on a lot of fabrics it won't really matter. On some fabrics it would matter a lot which way you cut it. So if you were using Lux Frost for instance, for this part, this this part here, your Lux Frost is smooth and it has a nap. And then, if the nap were wrong, you would totally notice. Does that make sense? But if you were like the marble, you can't tell the difference. It doesn't matter. So, still be careful. Nap should be running the same direction. Sleeve on top, band on bottom. I guess you don't need my notes, do you? I mean, we kind of need your notes. Okay. We need you to need your notes. <laughs> <laughs> I just like there's all these pieces. I have to I have to label them so I can figure it out. So we're gonna do the same thing. So this is how to attach the band to the cuff of the sleeve. This is the band to the sleeve. Got it. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, uh, it says it right there on the screen. You can add <laughs> bands to the sleeves. Great. And just, it's just throwing me off a little bit because the, the, the pink color isn't like the whole length of the sleeve, right? Right. It's so just a sample. It is, but this is actually how the sleeve is made, is that the band and the sleeve are the same size. This confuses people every time. You're oh, not the only one, I promise. Because okay. they're like, I'm that sleeve confused. is really small. And I'm going to show you what we do to make that sleeve actually longer and um, work a little bit differently. So again, these naps are going in opposite directions, so they want to argue with me. So I just have to pull it back and kind of force it to be where I want it to be. And then I have to force myself to just let it be when I sew it. Because you won't keep a perfectly even seam allowance and that's okay. It'll be all right, it'll still be a row. Okay, so I go ahead and I'm pinning parallel the whole time except for those corners that I got secured first. And then I go ahead and sew this. So you're going to do this. So obviously you make two pockets. Now we're going to do a sleeve. 
you would do this twice. Okay, again, I'm going to sew it with a quasi half inch seam allowance because that's what you would do. We're in serpentine. Oh, thank you. This is this is how I do it. Every the start of every straight seam has a little bit of serpentine to it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a feature. <laughs> that's a feature. Yep, exactly. And I go back and I cut a few stitches. Come on, little guy. There we go. Take those out so they don't run over them. So if I put the pins in right, they'll just slide right underneath the toes of the walking foot. But I want to make sure that my needle isn't going to hit them at all. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye on that. Okay. Okay. So this one is also a widthwise seam. So this one, you will notice that there's differences in all of them because widthwise versus lengthwise. Widthwise is stretchy. Okay. Lengthwise is not doesn't stretch. Okay, so it will sew a little bit differently. We're going to have a couple of good lengthwise ones too. So now with the sleeves, we're actually going to not finish this one. We're just going to set this aside. We would make two of these and set them aside. So for part of the reason we're doing this like a bit by bit is because now we've gotten four pieces into two pieces and those four pieces into two pieces. So we just sort of like start whittling down how many pieces are laying around doing stuff. Okay, so the next part, we're going to sew the trim front, or trim to the front. All right, so this is our next step. This is my tiny little robe front. So this would normally be 48 inches long. All right, that is longer than my board is. <laughs> so we're not doing that, we're just doing a small one, but it's gonna work the exact same way. You will have two of these. Okay, and I have to find my other one. Is this it? Yes. Okay. So I want this. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so I've got my nap running this way. I want to put my robe trim going the same way. So I'm going to pet it, make sure they're going the same direction. And now I'm going to pin this on. So again, I'm going to pin the beginning. And pin the end. I'm actually, it looks like I'm slightly longer. Maybe not. It was like just the tiniest bit there. I'm going to pin it in place because I don't want to try to make it fit because I don't want it to wobble here. So I'm going to turn that and look. And my, my trim is just the tiniest, tiniest bit longer. So that's a key is just making sure you're not actually stretching this as you go. Um, and trying to ease it to fit, it should just lay together. So it's really important when you're doing this to lay it out so you can get the whole thing flat. All right, this is definitely a, a big table project as you're working it through. Now, this is a lengthwise seam, so I don't need to pin as much because it's not going to stretch on me. I really just need to kind of keep it in check, but it's really not going to do a whole lot because it's lengthwise. So I'm going to pin a lot less. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. So there's <clears throat> the way this pattern is written. There's no lining. There's no lining. No lining. So you don't have you to worry about that. You could line it. You could. Just uh, make we, another we, robe we know and stick it on the inside. Lou, who did, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. And maybe she'll post a picture in the comments if you can. She can't. You have to go over to oh, I Love Cuddle. You have to join the I Love Cuddle uh, group that's a good, that's to be a good able suggestion. to see it. So, yeah, if you want to see her robe, that's where it's at. Yeah, if you want to line it, literally, you just make two robes. Um, you know, you would have your inside piece, and that would be here. And then you would do your trim. Like, everything is just twice as much, basically. Okay, so we're going to sew down this whole thing. You have to do. And you can see how that didn't really move at all. Which is kind of lovely. Okay. So now I've got my whole front. You can go around to the other side because okay. it's a bit so we sew. All right. Here I go. And then, he, then I won't elbow him quite so much, which is good. Okay. So now we've got the trim gone. 
um, on there. So we want all of our trim is cut basically the same width, so it'll all end up like this. So we have matching trim throughout. So the trim on the front, the trim on the pockets, the trim on the sleeves, it's all the same size. So we need to do the same thing where this is going to come over and create half size. Okay. So the way that we do this in the pattern, so we bring this over and we need it to match over here. So I will tell you, having done this, I don't know, what do we say? I've made four of them now, I think. Um, that one of the things that I found is that it's really easy to get this a little bit off as you're going and not get it to match over perfect. And if you've done self-binding blankets at all, you know if this twists just a little, you can see that twist really well. So one of the things that I would suggest that you do is that we bring this over and we're going to mark where it matches. I'll show you. So we're going to give ourselves some notches, basically. Because we've cut this out as two rect or three rectangles, we don't really have notches in the pattern at all. But I want to have some sort of a mark that I can use it to line up. So I'm going to just use my water or yeah, water soluble pen, and I'm just literally just marking randomly in my seam allowance and across. Okay, so I'm going to get these to match up again as I go. All right, that's how you can kind of keep it. So whether you're pinning it like I did on the pocket, and you could pin this whole way, or you can use this other technique that I'm going to show you. Okay, we want to get those to line up so it doesn't have any twist. All right. Is that was that clear? Clear as mud? Okay, good. All right. So this is what I'm gonna use for this. So one of the Pardon. things that we realize, this is Wonder Tape from Dritz. Um, this is my very well loved Wonder Tape. It's a travel I, roll. It's a travel roll and I just keep using <laughs> it and it gets cuddle fuzz on it. Um so what I do love about this is it's double-sided tape that is sticky originally. So it doesn't have to be ironed on. You could use an iron on, just use medium heat. But the sticky here is so nice. What I have found is that it works better if you're using it on C3 than if you are using it on Lux Cuddle. So this technique works really well if you are using Cuddle 3, the flat stuff. The print, a solid cup. Mm. What happened? <laughs> it got sticky on the wrong side. What row? <laughs> Anybody else have this happen? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. So when the sticky started coming off, it stayed on the on the roll and not on the paper. Okay. There we go. So I can still see my little blue line through there. And I'm just gonna line this up. Oh, that's great. Right it's along. Kind the of edge. transparent enough mm -hmm. to see what's going on. And it will be even more so when I take the paper off. Okay, so one of the things that we realized, because I was, had done this, and it worked really, really well with the Cuddle 3. That's what I did with the Rise and Grind one that I was wearing earlier. And that was with a Cuddle 3 for the uh, trim, more for the whole body of it. And it worked really, really well. And then when I tried to do it with the Lux Cuddle, it didn't work as well. And I'm going to show you why, because this is the back of the Lux Cuddle. I don't know if you can see the texture. We yeah, can. you can see the texture a little bit differently. This is actually much, um, I don't I want to say rougher, but that's not really it. It's Maybe coarse, a little more coarse. Yeah, but that, it's still smooth. It is. This is just yeah. like tighter, and this is a little bit more, like it's almost like a waffle sort of look to it. And so it doesn't have as many places that this the Wonder Tape will stick to it. So I've noticed that this is a little harder to get the Wonder, Wonder Tape to stick to, Okay. So you can do it. Just know that it is a little bit, a little bit harder. Hi, Clover. Jumping in. I see oh, you. Hi, Clover. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my little stiletto here. And I'm going to try to grab the sticky. Okay, so I just kind of get that underneath and pick at it. And then I'm going to pull this along. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over so that my quote unquote notches match. Okay, and I'm just gonna tuck my seam allowance underneath that. 
Hey, there's a great conversation going on over on the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. It's about uh, washing instructions and how to print out labels and stuff. So if you're watching on Facebook and you're not seeing that conversation, you want to go back and watch the show over on YouTube later. Check out the comments. Jackie is Jackie's having a great time with some folks over there. They're having a, a great little side chat that nice. is actually very, very helpful and great information good being shared good so, good check it okay. out okay so that is how that works and now i just realized i don't have my big clips either i'm just gonna use my little wonder clips if you have the big ones they work really well so one of the things that happened to me so now this is all secured right it's all in place we're going to top stitch this down one of the things that happened to me uh when i was doing this is that this part here turned under while i was sewing it and i didn't realize and i kind of sewed it like this one time and that was terrible. So what I realized uh, is if I wonder clip the edges, it will stay where I want it to be. It will stay flat. It can't curl under quite as much. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of make sure that it's nice and out flat. And pull it out flat. Okay, and I found this to be the case whether I was working with the, uh, the Cuddle 3 or the Lux that it want to kind of roll in just a little bit so this is a great way to get it to not roll in and be where you want it to be so at this point i'm going to top stitch i like to top stitch from this side generally because then i can see where the seam allowance is let's see if i can get that fixed right there okay because i can see where the seam allowance is there's a perk of doing it from the other side is that you can make sure that that stays nice and smooth, okay? So there we go, Bring. So do you see how it kind of wants to fold in a little bit? So this is the, I don't know, <laughs> the pros and cons, okay? All right, so come on over and we're, we're gonna sew this. All righty. All right, and I'm gonna sew it from this side because that's just how I like it. Um, and I am gonna sew, so I've noticed if I, it makes a difference if I sew the serpentine top to bottom of the nap, but it looks better if I sew it from top to bottom. So let's put it back over there. All right, so back on the serpentine and I'm gonna stitch down this whole side. Now the cool thing about using the Wonder Tape is I now don't have to pin it. Yeah, I see that. Which is no, no pins. Ruby. Okay. It's crazy, crazy. You never do that. I know, so now we can, now we can all discover other ways of using it. Oh. But I do like it for this big long seam because it's a big long seam. So on your robe, it's two 48 inch um, segments here that you're sewing, which is, you know, a hefty little bit. So not having to pin that is actually super helpful. Okay, and because my wonder clips are over there, they're not getting underneath my foot. It's not bothering me. If you use the big ones, it'll hold down um, your robe trim a little bit better when you're doing the wider one because it's going to be a three and a half inch wide um, trim. So you'll need to have that. Okay. And that's what it looks like on that side. All right. So can we see the, okay. oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Never mind. You just did. You flipped it over. I did. Attention. It looks similar. It looks I, similar. Yeah. It was magic. Okay. Anyway. So. You, there you, you go. Sewed it from the back. Sewed it from the back. But it looks great. Looks on the great front. on the front. If that way, I can, especially with the Lux cuddle, it's a little bit um, easier to control and to see. So let's show on this guy here. Okay. So on this one, um, on this one, I trimmed it, and it was much easier to see what I was doing. On this side, I did not, and it was terrible. Okay, what so mean, all. What do you mean you trimmed it? Well, you see the edges. See how different. See, look at the two oh, edges. Yeah. This way between yep. the two. Do you see how how trimmed this is and yes. how not trimmed it is? So you actually literally <laughs> took scissors. And I trimmed I took scissors. The nap out I of the seam allowance. I I just took scissors to it and cut it. Um, you can absolutely do that because when I tried to use it with the blade on the lengthwise one, I got more fluff sitting out here. The same thing happened on the. Uh, the sleeves, and we'll talk more about this. This is one that I actually, this is what we're trying to show right here. That one I trimmed off the the nap. 
Okay. All right. Got so it. when you're working with a Lux one, that might be something to do to keep the edge a little bit cleaner so you can see that to top stitch because we're going to do a lot of top stitching on that. So all of that top stitch is on the inside. So you, it's not like you have to fluff it up on the inside to make it really nice and neat. Just chop off the nap so you can see what you're doing. So sometimes there's like, you know, these pros and cons. And one of them is it keeps the edge really nice and hides your seam, but it also makes it a little bit harder to sew. Okay. So now we're going to have, we have two fronts. Like magic. Look at that. Boom. They just multiplied right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've got two fronts. And now we need to trim them and the back. And the back is going to be here. Okay. So the biggest trick with this is making sure that you've got two fronts that are facing each other. So you have two, a right and a left. All right. So make sure that you're putting your band on the correct side. If I put the band on this side, I would have two lefts. I'm not a right and a left. So make sure that you're putting the bands on the correct way and that the nap is all going the right way. All right. So this is the top of mine. This is the top of them. Now, this is where I get to find my little, my little pieces. What did I do with them? Here they are. Put a wonder clip on them so they're easier to find. Okay. Those are the templates. These from are the before. templates, exactly. <clears throat> and normally you would print these out at 100%. 100%. But this is how they're going to work. So that the one that I traced out before, that's the, the same one. So this is this is my baby size version of that. Right. This is okay. the demo the demo size. So when you're doing it, it's going to be this size. Got it. I'm all just right. trying to keep us all honest here. Exactly. As far as what's what sizes are what. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on here. Yep, so I can keep the nap going in the right direction because this is how my brain works. All right, so now I've got my front template. The way this is going to work is you're going to line this guy up to the top edge of your robe, and this one goes to the fold at the front. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line. Okay, this is how we get the, um, that front neckline so the hood fits on there nice and it doesn't come up straight up into your throat. <laughs> okay, so this will add that nice, nice little neckline to it. And this is what makes it completely interchangeable size-wise. So this part here, this robe front, you can make it however wide you want it to be. So this is how this could be very morphable for a child too, as you could figure out if you needed to make this wider and how long it needs to be. You could figure out these measurements for yourself basically, but this is what, um, because we're, we're gonna cut that neck off and the neck is the same size for whatever size, okay? And the neck is big enough to be for whatever size. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this right along that line. And I'm gonna cut that. So I will tell you, the first couple of them that I made, this was the very scariest part. <laughs> that I was like, okay, once I've gotten here. And then I realized that even if I cut it wrong, I just make a shorter robe. So if I did cut it off on the wrong side, I could just flip it around. <laughs> okay, and it would be a two inch shorter rope. It's no big deal. All right. So don't panic if that happens because it didn't happen to me, but I worried a lot. Okay, so now I've got my fronts and here's my back and I need to trim the back of this one the same. So again, I'm going to double check, make sure my nap is going the right direction. And I'm going to go ahead and use this template the same way. And the one that has this is the one that goes on the fold here. This goes to the top. So that little mark always means it's on a fold. It's like a little sewing mark. It's so cute. It's so dainty. Okay. So I would suggest that if you are doing this on a large robe, that you then do it like this. Because then we're just going to make it the full size. Okay. Because putting this, especially if this were a Lux cuddle and it were, you were doing it, it'd be really easy to get that off badly. So, um, and it's harder to cut through the two layers of Lux cuddle. And I don't suggest it. Got it. Okay, so do it one at a time. So this one is a little weird, so I'm going to use my scissors because it's so tiny. What are those scissors? These are my Karen K. Buckley scissors. Why are they cool? Because <laughs> they are micro serrated. <laughs> and I like them and they have squishy handles. 
Got it. So the micro serration is not uh, unique to Karen K. Buckley. But no. They are really, these are really great scissors, and they're very easy to find in the shop. And the reason the, the micro serrated is good is because... It grabs the fabric really nicely. So Got it. I'm like, here. So I can feel it. Like, it starts to grab here, and I have all sorts of control. So I can, like, do all sorts of fun things with it. So if you're into, like... Um, wool applique and stuff you can do some pretty fancy cutting on a unstable fabric got it okay so it's really good because it just grabs them really nicely so kay, uh, kai makes some and famori makes some and karen k buckley make them and they're all really good and they're great to have for cuddle yeah that all little right. that little neck hole thing that she cut doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense right now nope but, but just it's, trust it, me it's especially if you remember that we're making what amounts to a half size mm -hmm. so also you saw me wear the currently. robe that i did it on yes. twice so yes. like <clears throat> there is, there is reality. I, have, I have proof that it works all right so then what i'm going to do is go ahead and pin these on so i'm going to turn this over so you can kind of see so this is my back neckline okay Oh, I need to do one other thing before I sew this. Yeah, I'm going to do one more thing before I sew it on. Okay. So what we want to do um, is we want to create a sleeve extension is what we call it in the pattern. Okay. That's going to come out just a little bit so that we now create, um, yeah, an extension on the sleeve. This is basically like the seam allowance that sticks out? No, it's no. a little bit more than that. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to look at the pattern. Because I want to make sure that I get the measurement right. So that is going to be here on the pattern. It's going to tell you what to do. You're going to cut uh, four inch, 14 inches down from the top. You're going to make a mark and two inches in, and then you're going to cut off the rest of it. All right. Got it. So you're going to notch. So like the arms you're going to notch like the, the whole arms. side of it. Yes. Got it. And what that does is creates a little extension for the sleeve and um, makes it a little easier at that because you don't have all of your intersection there. So, so I'm faking it. Faking it. And I'm doing it two inches at 14 inches down. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to go ahead and mark it because I always like to mark it before I cut it just to be safe. Okay. So I tend to mark it. And then if you have noticed, I don't tend to use the ruler. You absolutely can use the ruler still. So I still mark it and then I will use the ruler. Sometimes if I want to get a really straight line. So this little notch right here, you can absolutely do it where you come back and then you're going to kind of tap into the corner. Roll it. Tap into the corner. Oops, I don't quite get it. You can also use scissors. Okay, we're gonna do that on. <clears throat> That's starting All to look like a garment piece. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's wee, but it's strong. Okay, oops, I need to turn that over. Okay, so I'm gonna put a robe aside. So these little notches, all of this part here, that's the part that always scares me a lot. And I'm like, oh gosh, I hope I get it right. So you're doing that notch on the two front pieces and both sides of the back piece? Yes. Got it. Yep, so we're gonna Trying create to keep this. Up here. So again, 14 inches <laughs> down and then two inches in. And then, yeah, that's actually when it starts to look like, oh, I'm making a thing. It's just not a big wad of fabric. And it's so much fabric that it really does kind of get a little um, visually intimidating. So don't let it overwhelm you. Okay. And like I said, if you end up making a cut wrong somewhere, just make a shorter robe. It's all good. I had this idea earlier when we were talking about like if you had ended up needing to make a shorter robe. Uh -huh. Could you do the trim color around the hem the same way? Oh, you or? totally could. Okay. That's when you now get to get creative. Yeah, get sorry. creative. So um, somebody did ask about uh, what if you didn't want the hood? So this would be where you are on your own. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> you could absolutely do it. I do have like plans to, you know, try to figure out something that we could give you a uh, like a hack for it, basically. Oops. Um, but where you cut out that notch for your neckline, you would cut that differently. So that you could do a band that would go around your neck that would have to come in deeper and not just around your neck. Or you could just do a little trim. I don't know. 
get creative. But that's that's where it changes is right there because that that na that neckline is different. If you want no hood. Yeah, I guess that's something to sort of if if you're looking ahead and I'm lousy at doing this, but like remembering that 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 little neckline hole is going to be seam allowance bigger. Right. Yes. So the yeah, when you start attaching things there, that hole gets larger. Right. Exactly. Got it. That helps my brain. Okay, so there's our back is ready to go. And I've got one of the fronts. And then what did I do with the other front? There it is. Okay, and I want to make sure that I'm doing it at the neckline. Okay, these are the important things. So we <laughs> cut off the right side. All right, so again, I'm going to mark down. We're pretending 14 inches by two inches by two inches. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. So you can I'll just cut this one out and just follow the line up. You got this. <laughs> it's actually pretty darn easy. Here we go. Three out of four of those came out just fine when I did it with the rotary cutter. The first one, of course, was the one that messed up. You can do that, except for this time. <laughs> so I'm going to give these a good little shake, because now I've cut some things. And I want to try to keep as much of that dust out of my machine as I possibly can. All right, so let's lay this back down again. All right, so now that's the, the we've trimmed the sides. And now we're going to attach the robe front to the robe back. OK. So this should basically match on both sides. OK. So your necklines are going to match up here. Your shoulder seams are going to match. And we're going to sew these across. Oh, that's the other interesting part, right? I mean, yes, in, in that the fronts overlap. They overlap, yeah. Yeah, exactly, because this we're going to wrap this around us later. So they do definitely overlap, and this is the seam that we're worrying about right now, uh, these shoulder seams. So we're going to match those up, do some double pinning, and sew them in place. If it is a little bit off right here, don't panic about it. It will really, it will work out just fine. We've dealt with a lot in that little seam. Because that's going to be in, in the next seam allowance this is, when right. you attach the hood. This is gets okay. stuck into the seam, uh, yeah, the seam allowance with the hood, and we can even it out. If it doesn't match, we just cut it off. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to come back over here and sew that again and do our little seam across the top. So this is, oops, we're, see, we're going to do a little serpentine first, and then we'll add a straight <laughs> stitch. <laughs> Do it, do as I do as I don't do. <laughs> I, every time, every time. Um, so this is a time, too, that if you have a serger, these seams work really well in a serger. And you could go ahead and sew them first and then run through a three-thread serger or just do the four-thread serger and just create it that way. But probably don't use work. your cutting blade on the serger. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't like to use my cutting blade on it just because um, it dulls it really fast. So I avoid it. But I know people who definitely do. If you don't mind the mess, you go for it. Okay, but it does make for a really nice uh, finish on that on that seam on these seams. So if you were gifting it to somebody, that would be a really nice thing to do. Is to, you know, it would give it a really good finished look. Okay. So there we go. Now it's going to start looking like a robe because see now we can turn it inside out. And it's going to start looking robish. Okay. All right. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going to get right to it. Okay. So now <laughs> we're going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this out. And all I'm caring about right now is my sleeve extension that I just did. So the rest of this can be really crumpled up and it doesn't matter. Okay. There are times that we're like, you're going to have to, uh, 
come to grips with the fact that like it's a lot of fabric. So getting it in control for just where you need it to be, that's what you got to concentrate on. Okay, so now we have two of these sleeves and we're going to sew these sleeves onto the sleeve extension here. Got All it. All right. Yep. So we're going to flip that over. What I like to do is just bend this in half, put it on my center, make sure that it's there. It should match perfectly, which this one it did. Yay. But it hasn't always. So um, just make sure that it's centered and then get it pinned down. All right. And it was noted that this, this pattern has three kind of three quarter sleeves. They're kind of three quarter the end, sleeves. Right? Which is yep. really nice, I think. I mean, it's going to keep it out of your coffee. Exactly. So I like, I like the three quarter sleeves. If you want longer sleeves, just add it. That's totally fine. And honestly, yeah. You could probably add a couple of inches and it would be fine. I feel like in one of the classes, somebody did that where they added a little bit because um, they felt like they wanted them longer. I like them shorter because then they don't, yeah, they don't drag in things. Okay. Because I'm definitely like, if I wear a robe, I'm just wearing it. I'm cooking in it, doing whatever I need to do in it. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and yeah. sew this. Ro robe days are robe days, start to finish. Yeah. That's start it. to finish. Exactly. The robe just stays. <laughs> Okay, sew this down all the way. And that's going to get sewn over, so I'm going to take it out. Right, go ahead and backstitch. All right, so now we've got the sleeves, the sleeve sewn in. All right. All right. So now you would do that on both sides. We're just going to do it on the one. And then we're going to go ahead and sew up the sleeve. So this is this is the fun part. In classes, this is always when I get excited. I'm like, look, we're actually making something. Because um, now you can put it on after we do this, which is pretty fun. All right. So uh, you can go ahead and mark your corner. And mine is going to be tiny. This, but this is, is a where half inch seam allowance. Half inch. <laughs> On your full sized robe. Okay. So that's where I want the corners to match up, is there. And I'm going to start sewing from here out and here down. All right. You can come in here and pivot. But what I found is it's a little bit um, stronger if I do this and I backstitch here and come down. And um, then I get to sew out from that. All right. You don't have to. That's the way it's marked in the pattern. So I want to show you, make sure that you know how to do it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin in from there. And then this is, again, a lengthwise seam, so I don't have to pin quite as much. I get it nice and flat under there where I'm pinning. Okay, how are we doing time-wise? Yeah, you know, it's yeah, not going to be an I, hour show. Well, I knew that. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I think I never gave Michael that. that I was, you know, it was, yeah. I'm gonna expecting be, 45, hour and 45. It's going to be what it's going to be. So this hang important. out. This is important. We want to get through all the steps. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start here. I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches. I'm going to come back, get that cemented real good because that's the, um, like the underarm seam where it can get a little bit of stress. Just going to sew the whole way down. Again, great place for a serger if you've got one. Is this where you told me last night when you were sewing the sample out by the fire uh, to not mention that you weren't using pins? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. you know, that nice long <laughs> seam right there, maybe if you've done it a few times, you might you, you might don't have get to pin quite so much. Yeah. yeah. You might be able to chug through it. Okay, so this is the same thing. I'm going to try to push this down. I'm going to try to push this down. I want these to match. So this is the one part that we're going to try real hard to get those to match and kind of fudge other areas if we have to. Okay, so I'm going to pin right next to that seam because I want it to match. And I want this one to match. I'm going to try. Okay, and I try to get my seams open, and if they don't end up open, it's fine really my theory on it like it'll be fine okay and then I want these ends here to match if they can 
If they don't, I will even them up later. All right, one more. And then we're going to go ahead and pin from, the, or sew from the corner where I started here, where I've got my little thread bunch. I'm going to start here, back stitch, and come across. Got it. Okay. That was a whole lot of perpendicular pinning in there. I certainly understand where you were trying to hold the seams all open and making sure that the, the seams all line up. Yeah. And then you just kind of went with it. Yeah, you kind of have to because literally there's, there's like no a room. pin. There's, there's, one pin there. yeah, there's like, no real yeah. room for a perpendicular pin in there. No, or, or parallel. parallel. There. There's, yeah, there's just it. not. So that's why that's happening. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to push that open. I'm going to come under here and try to push that open. Get that to come through. Kind of ease it in. And then as we get here, I want to make sure that these go this direction. So I'm going to kind of come under here and keep it uh, held in place with my little stiletto. Okay. All right. So now what I need to do, oops, sorry, is I need to clip this. So I'm going to clip into my corner, but not clip my stitches. And that will let that open up. Okay. So then I can go ahead and flip this and my sleeve will come out really nicely. Awesome. Okay. It's Sorry, getting there. Like See, the, all of a sudden it's like, oh, <laughs> no, it is going to be something. You guys could, out there in, in the land couldn't hear the room. Just was yeah. Like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it really does. So would we do this for class? And just fair warning for those of us who are locally that are going to do it. You're definitely going to get to a point where you're like, is this really going to be anything? Yay. <laughs> <seat camera. laughs> is it going to be anything? Yes, it really <laughs> will be. Okay. So now at this point, we're going to tuck this under and then we'll top stitch it. Okay. And I'm going to actually let that be. But you're going to do it the same way with the wonder tape or with a pin and you're going to top stitch that in place. Okay. Just like we did uh, the the top of the pocket. Exactly. Or, right? Yep. Yeah, Just okay. like we did for the top of the pocket Got or it. for the inside of the band. Got so it. before I get too far away from it, I want to show you this other. The, do you want to come around the other side? I can. Okay. Happy to. Um, so there is another way of doing this that you'll notice that when we do it this way. So this is the inside of the robe. When this opens up, this is a very nice, clean finish here. All right, and this is why we did the pockets, or the um, all of the bands this way. For the sleeve here, when this gets turned inside out and top stitched there, it's a really nice little finish, and you get a clean finish here because that seam allowance is inside. All right, so there's a different way that you can do it, and I'm just going to show you how you can do it if this the top stitching proves to be difficult for you in that way it leads to a less clean finish but what you can do is take your band you sew it on you fold it in half you continue to sew it so you sew both layers on there and then you can top stitch it your seam allowance down okay so here i'll show you the whole thing i wrote it out for you okay we're gonna start here so you're gonna sew one layer you fold it in half so the second layer on. Okay. And then, it's still with a straight stitch? Yep. And then you top stitch on the main fabric from the right side. So when you top stitch this, you stitch it here. Uh, okay. So that's okay. the difference in what that looks like. I think this looks nicer. I like the finish here better than I like the finish here. So this is why this is shown in there. But we've had a few people who are like, couldn't you just sew the band to it and flip it over? You can. It just looks nicer if you do it this way. You can do what you want. You can do what you want. Okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just exactly. A, it's just a pattern. All right. So then we did the top stitching the sleeves. What's the next thing, Michael? Get it up there. Create the hood. That's what I thought. Okay. So this is my little hood pattern. <laughs> my little hood pattern. All right. Yours is going to be that big hood pattern. So yours will be this size. All right. Nice big hood pattern. All right. It seems huge, but it actually works really well, and you can see it fits really nicely, lays down well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew, and I'm just going to talk through this one because I prepared it so we could. You're going to sew this together, and sew this together, 
Okay, so okay. you're showing the back of the hood. This is the front of the hood. So they're going to end up kind of like this. Or the inside and the outside. You okay. Think about it like that. Is that right? Yes. And then I lost the white piece. Well, that's a shame. We're going to pretend this one's it. Might be for all I know. Then you're going to sew this in between the two. Oh. So what that creates is this piece. Flip it over and it'll make more sense here. God, I would like to go up and reference the other, the mm -hmm. other robe. Sure. Okay. Sure. Because this gets this it. gets weird. Okay. <laughs> so so here it's, it's got the nice white on the inside. It's got the pink on the outside, the blossom, and, and then, then the band. The band. And there's there's a it. seam here, and then there's a seam here. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me let me show that again. So this is your your hood lining, the outer hood, and then you sew the band around it to both sides, seam allowance, and then this one I actually top stitched so that it looked the same, even though it's actually stitched here. Got it. Okay, it explains it in the pattern. This one's really easy, because really you sew a seam, sew a seam. That's it, ta-da, <laughs> okay. Ta-da. Okay. Then you flip it and it's like this. So here's the little, come on, little bud. There we go. And this is like right. a wee hood. It's like, like a wee know, little half hood. Half the time we get done with these projects and I'm like, give it to me. I'm going to run around the store. It'll be fun. This one, not, not so much. Not, happening. not so much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I will, like, I want to note. So one of the things is that when you sew this on here, you'll notice that the band here is square. It ends up being slightly longer, and what you and what you do is you trim that so that it comes down and meets the next piece. Okay, so this explains it in the pattern, but make sure that you're actually trimming it in a swoop and not just a square. Okay. I think I understand that. Because this will yep. be sewn like this. Yep. And so you want to just swoop it off. Got it. Okay. Promise it works out just fine. So that's how you're going to create the hood. We've got that. We want to put that to the side. One of the things that I'm going to do before I sew, so we're going to sew the hood on and then we top stitch the hood on. You could hand stitch it, but nobody wants to do that, right? We want to just sew it on. So one of the things you do is mark the center of the sides. So the width of it, this is the center of the width. And then we marked the center up here and that's how we lined up our hood centers, and then over here we have, where have I could find the other end? There it is, okay? This is the middle, this is that fold line, so that the hood will actually have a trim and be nice. You could sew these together, but you can't do it till later. So right now we need to just have the top stitching on one side. What I'm gonna do is this center of the band is going to match with the center front of the robe. Okay, so here's my new robe sample, look it. It just sat over there for a second and cooked, and now <laughs> Ta -da. I'm finished. Okay. Or more just like tough. <laughs> All right. Oh, and one of the other things, <clears throat> excuse me, that you could do is that this you can um, put on a little grow grain ribbon here, and make yourself a loop. Okay. I don't have a grow grain ribbon with me, so I am going to. That also might be a nice place to add your washing instructions or your tag. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those little, um, you know, those little tags I have that say like, P.S. I love you, or you can get some that have washing instructions. Sometimes people make them different places. I like the ones that you and, have that say made with love and swear words. Yeah, that's a pretty good one too. <laughs> okay. So I want, this is the part to not get too confused because I know the first time I got a little confused. This is the outside. This is my lining. My outside is what I'm going to line up my center. Let me see if I can get this in a way that you guys can see it and understand what I'm doing, because this is where it gets a lot of fabric. Okay. Here's my center back, right, right here where that little dot is. Yep. Okay, we're gonna come around here, and here's my center front. So these were those little swoops out that I did, if you remember. Yep. When I cut those out, this is what creates that neckline here. So I want my center marks on my hood to match with the center here and the center seam of the hood that I sew the two pieces together to match with my center back. Okay? I'm following. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to take this, this seam allowance 
and I'm going to put it with that line right there. And I want to put these right sides together so the outside hood goes to the outside fabric, the outside back. So that's one place that I get to actually make sure that it's in the right place. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get this mark to match up with my center front. I'm going to pin that in place. And then I want to kind of look here and see if I can make that so that it will match up. I will tell you, in the C3, harder to get it to match up. Lux Cuddle, you just fluff it. It totally looks like it matched. <laughs> okay? Doesn't matter. Close enough. Okay? So it is the one place that if you want to be picky, you can kind of get a little picky with it. I don't suggest you get real picky with it. But it does, um, it is like obvious if it's too far off. So take some, some care with that. You could do some hand basting if you wanted to or some just machine basting and come back and make sure it's right. We're just going to go for it and see what happens. Okay, so again, so this is my side. Because I'm sewing around a curve, I've done it parallel. The pinning? Mm -hmm. yep. I mean perpendicular, sorry. Yep, gotcha. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Put my little mark here. Those words both shouldn't start with P. They really shouldn't. Because Ooh, it's who decided that. <laughs> Same people who decided that you park on the highway or that yeah. you can park in your driveway and drive in your parkway. Right. Silly. So again, awesome. it's the same thing here. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna come here, try to make sure that that's gonna match. So again, that's a half an inch in from the edge. You want to make sure that those those overlap. It's not gonna be they're not gonna be perfectly on top of each other because of that seam allowance. And this is also, if it doesn't match perfectly, you get to ease things around, all right, and make it work. So now we've got this pinned. This is our hood pinned onto the body, and we're going to give it a sew. I'm just going to leave that pin under there and hope for the best. Okay. The hazards. <laughs> the hazards. It fell, and now it's, it's by the pedal, and I'm just going to leave it. Okay. So I can't remember how I like to sew this. So I'm going to sew it this way and see what happens. Okay. You're starting at the band. So I'm starting at the, well, I'm starting at the band, but I'm starting on the side that has more because that's usually what I like to have up on top. I feel like I've done it differently before, but we're just going to do it this way. Because um, what I want to do is start sewing at the fold here. Okay. And if I get off just a little bit, it's fine because it'll be on the inside. Okay. So it overlaps a little. It's all right. I take out my pins as I go, and I'm going to make sure that my fabric gets brought out. Okay, so you're going to have to take your time with the collar or the neckline here and make sure that your fabric stays fairly well aligned because you're kind of sewing two very different shapes together. And you want to make sure that they're kind of easing in where they want to be. I'm going to go ahead and tuck that under there, try to get my seams to lay flat. And I'm going to use my stiletto a bunch here to get my fabric to go where I want it to go. Because this one, there's no, uh, there's no wonder taping this seam, unfortunately. <laughs> We're just going to try our best. All right, so this is sometimes what can happen is you see where this gets like kind of caught up. So we're just going to be real careful as I pin it. I'm going to take my pin out and let that ease flat again. So sometimes when you're pinning, it'll get pushed in ways that you don't want it to so just make sure that you're kind of keeping an eye on it this isn't a this isn't one that you can sew fast well that was an interesting note um somebody noted that you did not stay stitch no the neckline no and do you think that would help at all or no not? because if i stay stitch it it can't stretch to fit and i need it to be able to um morph a little bit and be able to ease into the hood okay yeah. got it yeah, we had originally talked about stay stitching that seam, and then we decided that it needed the flexibility of not being stay stitched. So I think that was a you, great question. It is a great way. question because if you are a like if you're a garment sewer, that would normally be something you would do because you don't want that seam to get stretched in and out of whack. With the cuddle, we kind of need it to have some flexibility. So I'll make sure and see if my seam got caught the whole way. Looks like it did. So now that's the back of it. Okay.
So that's how nice. the neck fits in really nicely. So now we have a choice. And now I can't even remember. I think it says just to turn this under. But you have a choice of doing this. You can turn this under along that. Oh, I stay stitched it too on here. That Sorry. you did stay stitched. I did stay okay. stitched this. So I did it for two reasons. One, you can fold this under and make sure that it matches really nicely here. Okay. And stitch this down. Or you can actually come up and cut across here and then fold this down raw edge so that it's done like the rest of them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. You have okay. a, you have enough there to roll under if you wanted to. Otherwise, right. you could cut off that extra seam allowance right. and just top stitch it on. Yes. So I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do a little bit here. So that's what I did on the Lux Cuddle. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off right along the that stitching. That stitch line that you did, which is, would which be would be at, at your half, half inch seam allowance. Not, not this little quarter inch demo no. size. Got it. Yeah. So we would do this at a half an inch and then you just trim it off. Okay. So then I can go ahead and pull this underneath. Make it match up with my seam. Tuck that all up underneath there. Okay, and then I'm going to just work my way through here. And then that will get top stitched down. Okay, so if you want to, you can also just do it where you fold it under. Like this. And top stitch that down. What I found is with the C3, you can absolutely do that. It gives you some flexibility in how far this gets pulled so that it's nice and even on your corner. Okay, so make that so that it doesn't pop out like this. Okay, you want this to come back and be a nice Got it. graduation up I'm to that other. About, like the straightness of that mm -hmm. line right there. Right, exactly. Okay. So if I pin this here, I can turn it over and look on the other side and be like, okay, how does that work? That comes up fine. Now I'm going to stitch this down. Okay, so I'm going to fold this under a little bit. Just a little bit more, just so I can show you. So, where are all my pins? I put them away, I guess. That's crazy. I put them away. Um, so then you're going to go <laughs> ahead and stitch. Oh, they're all over there. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch this one little part here so we can see what we do, because then I want to talk about the pocket. I need to get out my zircle again. It's well, that's nice. funny. That just came up in the comments. That, I didn't even have to prompt you. you no. You do like that I do. circle, too. I do love it. Yep. Also, that little pin cushion is super cute. It is pretty cute. Okay. So now I would have pinned this whole thing down. We're going to pretend that we've sewn all the way over to here. Come on, little guy. Okay. And we're just going to stitch this down with a zigzag. All right. So we're going to bump this up. It's going to seem like a huge zigzag on here. It is a big zigzag, but it works out really well. Okay. It's close enough to five and five. All right. There we go. Five and five. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down just like you would if you were doing a self-binding blanket or you're doing the binding on a quilt. And because it's inside, you're not really... Would a serpentine stitch also work here? So it just kind of matched aesthetically or would mm -hmm. it not be as strong? Oh, you totally could. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just check in. Yep, you totally could. Uh, I wouldn't do a straight stitch just because it would be harder to keep it exact. Come on. Okay. Give it back. Okay, give Jean. it back. Exactly. So you're just going <laughs> to top stitch that down, and then it'll be top stitched from the outside. So with the uh, the see through, and see that. Oh, look at how well that line worked out. I'm so happy with that. This I needed to pull just slightly more, but whatever. This is perfect. Okay, that's what we're looking for: is for this to be straight and this to be straight. It's like Neapolitan ice cream, <laughs> or like orange <laughs> sickle. Of Neapolitan orange cream. sickle. That's what it looks yeah. like. Okay, so that's what we're going for. Then that hood works like this on the one over here. If we can come around, show that one. This one. I did the stitching in here. You can't really tell. But I did cut off all of the 
the nap so that it would I could see that edge really nicely. And then I went ahead and I did some stitching up here in the top of the head. I put them together and I did a little stay stitch right there. You see that? Okay. Okay. So that the hood would stay together. Got because it. that was one thing that I found is that the hood comes apart still unless you do a little stay stitch. All right. Kind of up in the crown of your head. Yep. Just a little tack. I just did a little zigzag up there to make it stay. All right. So there we go. There's our hood. Okay. So cute little robe. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to put the pocket on. Is that right? Is that the next step? <laughs> I think so. Pocket loops or... or oh, pocket belt. Or, or belt loops. I don't know. What's coming up on the screen? Make belts and loops. Okay, let's do that. Then we'll do the pockets. Okay, so the belt loop. So this is when it starts getting crazy. What's that? Um, tiny little scraps. Got it. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, I have a piece. Oh, there's, there's a belt loop. I want to do... Okay, there's a tie. There we go. Okay, so the belt loop, you can do this two ways. You could fold this over and do a serpentine stitch down the middle. Okay, okay. would Wonder Tape help with that? Or it can. Pinning oh, or, yeah. I'm going to cut this in half and do it both ways for okay. you real quick. Okay, so what I like to do is measure over. So if this is, I think it's two and a half inches, right? Two and a half inches, then I measure over a half an inch. Draw a line. Fold this up to here. And then I'm going to fold this over. And it will end up being just about the middle. So yes, you obviously could use Wonder Tape here. Stick that down. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna serpentine that in just a second, or you can do it this way, where we're just gonna fold it in half. Oh, like like an envelope. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So we'll do both of those, and then I'll flip it inside out. You can see. The so we are. Over here. Yeah, go for it. So I'm just on a straight stitch. So we're gonna do this one first, and I'm just gonna stitch this down. Do a little back stitch. Mm -hmm. New camera angle. Do, do, do. Okay, so that one is just stitched down the side. This one we're going to do a serpentine right down the middle. So the difference between these two is if I were doing a Lux cuddle, I would want to do something that was probably easy, which I could do a serpentine or a zigzag down this, and it's going to totally hide my raw edge here never going to see it again. If it's really fluffy, like the Lux Cuddle Frost, or like if you were using, you imagine this in Seal, um, turning this little thing would be really hard because it's so thick. So with C3, turning this is not that huge of a deal, I hope. Um, you say. I say, I know. And I'm like, wait, I didn't sew an end to it. Okay, I'm that not going to show you what that stiletto just did to the floor. Um, or your foot. Yeah, I missed my foot, but it impaled the floor. Okay. Bad floor. Bad floor. <laughs> Bad stiletto. Bad okay. gravity. This stiletto is great. Because, I mean, look at it. I could just turn it inside out this way. It's awesome. So I'm just grabbing the seam allowance is what I'm doing and pulling it out. By grabbing it, I mean just stabbing it really hard and pulling it. Okay. So that way I can do it with the Cuddle 3 and it works all right. I found that with the Lux Cuddle, it's a little bit harder. It's a nice finish, very clean. Okay. This is the other way that you can do it, which just has the serpentine stitch down the middle. And you don't have to try to turn it inside. And you out. don't have to turn it. In fact, All you right. couldn't turn it inside. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this, then you're just going to sew this onto the side, cut it to the right length, then you just zigzag them onto the side of your robe in the right placement. The belt is a little bit different. So the belt we've done in a couple of different ways. Um, where is, here's the way that I did it originally, which is kind of in this same fashion where we just stitched down the middle. And what we realized is that it was okay, but we didn't particularly love it. So uh, we changed it in the pattern. And what we do is we're gonna sew it this way. 
So the same way we did our little belt loops, but then we're gonna do something a little bit funky because what happens is when you sew that, that side, you have a seam allowance. So this is what we were trying to avoid is the bulk of a seam allowance down one side, okay? Because um, when you turn it inside out, it's, it's hefty. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch this back to a straight stitch and in the middle because I'm back to being at actually a half an inch. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. This, this is the full-size version of this part of the pattern. Yes. Okay, and actually, I think this was a slightly smaller, but it's clo much closer. Certainly, we're using the half-inch seam allowance we're gonna, full size. Yeah, we're going to make a bigger seam allowance so that you can kind of get the idea here. Teresa okay. actually does absolutely have that cool metal tube that you can turn. Uh, I do. <laughs> turn the uh, belts a fast inside turn. out. Fast and turn. And what's that other really cool clover one that you have that has like. The, the little bodkin the little, with the clippy. The bodkin mm -hmm. yeah, has the clampy on There's it. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. Um, if I had a sewing room that was, you know, stable and wasn't in a box all the time, it would mm -hmm. probably be easier. It's okay. <laughs> so we're just going <laughs> to stitch along here and then we're going to turn this inside or not turn it inside out yet. But if we did, what happens is when you turn it, just a little bit. you end up with a big bunch of clump right here because your seam allowance is under it. So what we've found is that if we twist this and we open up the seam allowance and put it across the end, we don't get the double bulk of it all being in one place. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so I'll show you just on the other end. It'll make a little bit more sense because I can kind of show you both ends how it works. So I'm just going to sew this across the end. So if you're doing your belt loop, again, this is an 80-inch belt loop. So it's a long belt loop. We weren't going to show you me doing that because that's, that's a long time. Um, here's, here's my tool for today. This is my knitting needle from Linda in Long Island. Long Island, Linda. It's probably not going to only Linda Linger. That's right. Hi. <laughs> so she gave me this when I was there, and it works really well for stuffed animals. Also works for this. Oh, so it worked really well because you had already sewn that one end shut. Right. Got so it. you would leave a turning gap and then turn it inside out. And then it gives it a really nice crisp end. Oh, I see it. Okay. Got it. So that's much nicer, I feel like, than normally when it would look like this at the end, and it's bulky on this side and flat on this side, and then I feel like I have to top stitch to make it even, like, not do weird twisty things. So this actually makes it lay really nicely. Got it. Okay. So that's the way that we tell you to do it in the pattern. Okay. So what was that? What else was there? One more thing? The pocket? It's time to put the pocket on. Pocket. Okay. Let's try that. Okay. So that's the way you're going to make the tie. Here's my itty bitty little tie. <laughs> okay. And that's my other, my other robe, the one that isn't fully cooked yet. Okay. So one of the things, when you get to this point, you're going to put on pockets, you're going to put on belt loops. This is when you get to try it on. And you get to decide. So we we have the we have the robe, and I think uh, seven inches down is what is like the suggested to start there for your pockets. And then you would put your belt loops above the pockets. So make sure that they're just like in the right placement. But you want to try it on and give it a shot. So like Hawk liked the belt loops higher than I like them, and that's because I like them bloused up a little bit on the top. So it really just depends on what you want. Okay. So try it on and see what you want because I don't have a bust. That's true. You do not. <laughs> no one had noticed. <laughs> I'm just, yep. Where did I do oh, There it is. There There's the reasons. pocket. Okay. <laughs> so when we put the pocket on, I put it three and a half inches down because it was half of the seven. Okay. So it's down from the armpit, the underarm seam. And I'm going to measure it. And what I want to do, four, seven inches. Oh, seven inches. <laughs> no, nope, I just made it worse. <laughs> now shoot. we have, uh, which is not what we want. Okay, so definitely put them on. We actually had that happen in one of the classes with a different pattern that we were using. And um, yeah, the pockets got put on. She used the pocket placement and put the 
bottom of the pocket or put the top of the pocket where the bottom was supposed to go. So literally the pocket was like, yeah, down her, around her knees. It was pretty funny. And then she was like, I'm just leaving it. <laughs> so wherever that lady is, thanks for the, thanks for the laugh. It was great. <laughs> okay. So we want to get our pocket placement on there a little bit better than that. So I kind of just find the corner. I try to make it even from the edge here. So this is the one that we did before. And these seams, you can see, they just make it so it sticks or it turns down underneath really easily. Okay, on the corner parts, you might need to use your stiletto and get those to tuck underneath nicely. That one went fine for me. The stay stitch that you okay. added before really helps. It really, really helps to get that to just fold under exactly where I want it to be. There we go. Okay. It seems like, you know, save the last part for last. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's not it's not too terrible. This is this is a little bit smaller, but that half inch will work really nicely and it doesn't um it doesn't ever show. So you're just going to fold that right underneath and nobody's ever going to see that you did some little cheat stitching to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. We're going to sew it down right along there. So what I have found is I did it a couple of different ways because that's what I do. Um, and the top stitching just as a straight stitch works perfectly well. So I had originally thought that we should probably zigzag it or do a serpentine and it actually looks best with just a straight stitch. So I'm going to do um, a little bit of a reinforcement here that's also in the pattern. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to back stitch here. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it. And then I'm going to turn it again. So what I'm doing is creating a little triangle oh, up here at the top. Got it. Okay, and what that'll do is make your pocket much, much more stable so that when you're hanging your hands in it or hanging, you know, your, put your, your phone in it and it's nice and heavy, it's not going to tear your pocket, which is important because... We want to be able to use those pockets. They don't put them in enough clothing for us. So if we're going to put pockets, you might as well make them last. Okay. Would it be possible to sort of skip the stay stitching step and the turning under and just raw edge this pocket onto the front? If you were using Lux Cuddle, absolutely. Just slap that baby down and stitch it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. I would probably go over it a couple times, though, because if you're stitching over the raw edge of the Lux Cuddle, it wouldn't be quite as um, stable on there. Got it. I would go ahead and, and stitch it twice. And then extra, a little extra effort on the fluffing. Yes. So I got the opportunity to fluff the seams. Where I'm jumping ahead again. Go for uh, it. It's okay. Uh, on the, the one we've been, the, the big Lux one we've been looking at, this one. I like that um, you re refer to it as an opportunity. I did. I tried, <laughs> to, I tried, to, I tried to say that. <laughs> I could. That was great. Um, I yes. appreciate it. Uh, and I got to learn some stuff. Uh, one. We always sort of say after we're done with all of these seams that you should use your stiletto and fluff them. What we don't tell you is that it will take you as long to do that as it did to sew. <laughs> That's why so. I tell you, stick on a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it is totally like, you know, once you kind of get into the groove of it, yeah, you put on a show or whatever, you're chit-chatting and you just start doing it and, and it's fine. You don't need your sewing machine to get that part done. No. Nope. Very comfy. Yep. Anyway. Um, it was, it really, really improves the look of your seams. If you take a minute, especially with the zigzags and you kind of work the nap out yep. of those stitches and again, and it doesn't loosen up the seam at all. I thought it would, yep. uh, you know, I figured, you know, it would, you know, you try to get all those, those, that nap fluff out from under there and you'd be in trouble, but right. you're not. So this Fine. is basically what you're doing on the back to create that little triangle. Up okay. here at the corners, and we've just stitched all the way around. Okay, that's what it looks like up here. What that does for your corner is hold down a little more and makes it so this isn't going to break because it's not just one line of thread. It's actually several. So this is much stronger here. Okay, so then you can put heavy stuff in your pocket and it's not going to pull that. Got it. All right, so that's, that's just a good um, sewing technique to be able to do. So then we would pop on our bands here, stick the belt in, and you're good to go. Okay. I'm so excited. I think that's it. I think I think we did it. Did we get through all the steps, Michael? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put my row back on. Uh, hem. 
Oh, yeah. ahem. Yep. <laughs> okay, who needs to hem it? Like, come on, just leave it. Just kidding. Okay, let's hem it. You're right. See, this is why I have you guys. Is because I'm like, I don't know. I think we're done. All right, so in the pattern, I think it calls for a, an inch and a half. So I'm just going to show you how we do that. So an inch and a half would mean I fold it here. So one of the things that people want to do is mark the one and a half where they're going to fold it. My trick for that is that I'm going to mark it where it folds to. So if it's an inch and a half seam or hem, I want to mark three inches up from the hem. That's great. Diane is actually fluffing a big blanket, fluffing the edge on a big blanket while we're, she's watching the show. Nice. This afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this up, try to open up my seam allowances. And I'm just going to make this match that line. Rather than trying to fold on one and a half inch, I folded it two, three inches. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that. Pin that. And then we'll sew that. And I'll show how it looks from the front. We just won't finish it. I never get to finish anything, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> if we could have like four hour quilting shows, it would be great. Sewing shows, it would be great. Okay. So again, I marked where it folds up to, which was three inches. I'm going to go ahead and do this as a serpentine because it will match the rest of the top stitching, which I think will look nice. You could do a zigzag. You could do, um, sorry, I'm trying to find my reverse here. Um, you could do a zigzag. You could do a straight stitch. I'm going to do the serpentine. Make sure I've got my stiletto so I can hold it over nice and nice and straight. If you need to um, trim up your bottom a little bit, so say your sides didn't match perfectly because sometimes that happens, you would go ahead and do that before you did your hem here. And then this is a water-soluble pin, so I could come along here and spritz it if I felt like I could see it. And if I can't, it's fine. It'll just stay there. Okay. All right, I'm going to get over that seam so you can see this part is just like, just hold it down and kind of help it through if you need to. All right, so we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. We're going to pretend like we stitched all the way around. And I'll show you what the front looks like. Because look, this side of the front looks amazing. Oh, yeah, totally. That's a lovely, it's okay. a nice hem. Nice little hem, totally finished up. Great. Nice little pocket. All right. I'm going to trim my threads there. That was the other thing he had the opportunity to do was trim all my threads. Um, <laughs> so this one I did with just a straight stitch. Okay. So this one I did with the serpentine here, but straight stitch here. This I also did a serpentine up the outside edge. Oh, a little top stitch. Versus this oh, one where I left it plain. Okay. And then this one is just the zigzagged edges down the side. All right. So, um, again, make sure that you sh check out uh, SoTrendyMN.com is where you can find all of the, um, the fabrics for this. She has the Rise and Grind. She also has, oh, we have some pictures. What did I do with them? Oh, poop. I think they're right here. There they are. So, these are some combos that she's got. And we're going to show these really quick while we're getting a winner for our... Um, because she's got the rise and grind. And so look at these are all the combos that she has for your robe. The kits. The robe kits that you can pick out. There it is. It's with the dark. I think it's like, is it chocolate? Do you know what the? Chocolate hide. I think it's chocolate hide. It's uh, so yeah, good. It's really good. That's going to be a fun one. So if that's the real, that's the real. Mm -hmm. So this, she here. also has this, this is the, uh, I think this is sand or latte, I think it might be latte, um, the C3, oh, but I really, the hide is really like, if I All could right. do it again, it would be that we one. Go. We're going to do this. Okay. We're not, we're not going to throw the names of these combos up, but you're just going to have to go look at the website. Go look at the website. <laughs> you're going to see exactly. Go what's dig going around. On. Go see look, what they got. Super fun stuff here. We've got. Super great combos. Uh, we've got the little gnomes in the Halloween mm -hmm. with this really majestic ma magician blue. Look at the sparkle cuddle. She's got the Where's sparkle that? right oh, there. Hang on. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? 
So there are a ton of yeah, combos. These pictures of the are actually a, a great tool. It's That's a great way I'm, of looking at it. Yeah. Right. So make sure that you go check out. There's She's got a bunch one. of it. That's a super nice Lux one. Okay. Really fun combinations. You could do so much with this. So go ahead and pick like a Prince and a Lux or a couple of Luxes. Just do whatever it is that suits you best. We're gonna get them all. Because there are is this a new Dalmatian? A ton. Yeah, I think that's Dalmatian. Yeah. Nice. I know. And then the Isn't that great? We were talking about, I was like, maybe I'll change what I'm doing. I was like, wait, I have too much prep already done. I can't. Okay. And I can't remember this one. This was a new Halloween print. It's trick or treat or oh, something I can't like remember. that. Boo, boo, something. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> this one I actually made another version of, but I, we had to change the way I did the band. So I don't have that one with me, but that one I love. And that oh. one's a perfect one for Christmas. Because you could make a matching blanket and robe. How great would that be? I love the buffalo check. I, so you know cute. I do. And, you know, this is outdoorsy thing is totally us. It's great. RV. It's great. So, yes, lots of combinations. Make sure you check out the website. Like she said, 10% off today, right? Um, so, October 4th and 5th, 2022. You can get 10% off of those. Um, make sure that you follow her on Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook. We're on the I Love Cuddle Fabric Facebook group as well as Instagram and all of that good stuff. So do we have a winner for this week? Today's giveaway winner is Susan C. on YouTube and Eric L. on Facebook. Great. So if you are on Facebook, yay. yay. So if you are on Facebook, you can go ahead and message us directly on Facebook. And if you are the winner from YouTube, please send us an email to info at shannonfabrics.com with your mailing address, phone number, um, all of your information so that we can get those beginner boxes out to you so that you can sew with them. So if you're new to, new to sewing with Cuddle Fabrics, the beginner boxes are fabulous they come with three one yard cuts of a solid a print and a luxe cuddle including the uh, needles and thread are in there as well as pins so they're um, a really wonderful and wonderful way to get started and you get a pattern book that has six different projects in it so wonderful way to learn how to use the fabric because there are a million yep. different ways <laughs> well done to Thanks use this fabric, back on including that. this great Lux Cuddle robe. So I hope that that answered all your questions. I'll go check back and check later and see if there's any more questions I need to ask. Also, look for it um, on our on the ShannonFabrics.com website. If you go and you look under education, you'll see that we are teaching a bunch of classes being me and our brand ambassadors. And this is one that gets taught as well. So go look at the education page and see where classes are being held near you so that you can attend. Okay. Um, is that it? Is that all for today? It. All right. I think we did it. Thanks for sticking through with the robe. I can't wait to see what you make. Post them on the I Love Cuddle Fabric group or send them to the email if you've made them. I love seeing what you guys make. So thanks so much for joining me again. We'll be back next week from Calico Hutch in Hayward, Minnesota. So we're going to head straight south of here next week. And we're going to be working on the Felix the Fox little appliques, the, the new Kimberbell project. So I hope that you'll join me then. We'll talk all about embroidery and cuddle and all sorts of Okay. All right. Until then, happy sewing.